We're gonna wrap up our web scraping story with iteration. So what have we done so far? We were looking at First Minister's COVID speeches and we started with this page and our ultimate goal is to get to this table, right? Um, and we have created a function called scrape speech and we have used this function to scrape data from various URLs. So the URL for each of the speeches, for example, for 20, uh, October 26th or October 23rd. And from each one of these URLs, the function uh, get, returns to us a tibble with one row for that one speech and six columns for the various attributes we want, so we want on that speech. So let's talk a little bit about our inputs. So those URLs. We now have a function that will scrape the relevant information on speeches given the URL of the page of the speech. Where can we get a list of URLs of each of the speeches? This uh, picture probably looks familiar to you. Uh, we've looked at this page before and that's where we were, what we were using to get to the individual speech pages. But so far, we've manually clicked on these, but what we really want to do is to be able to parse the source code so we can get the URLs that are hidden um, underneath these links um, programmatically. And so we can use, again, the uh, selector gadget to figure out the appropriate tag and we can say, I want to read um, this page. So this is the URL here is basically the URL of the page that lists all of the speeches. I want to read the source code for that page. I'm going to save that as all speeches page. And then I'm going to take some, uh, grab the nodes that I identified with my selector gadget. And next, this is a new one instead of grabbing the text because i don't want what's visible to the human eye right now so instead of grabbing the text what i'm doing is i say i want a particular attribute from these nodes and the particular attribute that i want is the href um, attribute that's basically the hyperlink reference so that is where in the html code the url link is saved and so what i get out looks like the URLs I've been looking at, but it's missing something, huh? It's missing kind of the beginning of the page because these are relative links. So it's basically saying from here, from uh, the main page that we were at, if you tag on this character string to the URL, we're gonna land where you want to land. But I actually want to have access to the full URL that I can basically copy and paste into my browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say first, let's figure out the COVID-19 URL fragment. So um, over here, we had a list of all of the speeches, but we know that the ones uh, that go to COVID-19 speeches as opposed to other speeches Nicole Surgeon has given always has this um, uh, character string or this pattern COVID-19 in it. So I'm going to say take those strings and then subset it for ones that contain COVID-19. So here I'm using a function from the string R package uh, called str subset. This is similar to if I had this information in a data frame and I said filter for wherever you can see, uh, you can detect the COVID-19 uh, pattern. So str subset allows you to do that quickly um in one step as opposed to doing like putting these into a data frame and doing a filter i can just work with the vector that i'm working with and say give me only the fragments of urls that have the pattern covid19 in it and then the last step is again using the uh, string r package to construct a new character string and here i'm doing something i have not done before but we have mentioned it but haven't done it so far so the uh, pipeline gives me basically what i saw on the pre previous uh, slide which is the url fragments um, of the urls that go to covid 19 speeches and what i want to do is i want to add something to the beginning of these speeches so right before beginning of these urls right before these slashes i want to add the um beginning piece of the urls that i need so what i say uh what i use here to construct that character string is this is what i want at the beginning which is basically the scott gove website and then I use the dot. And remember the dot was something we used to say, 
whatever is coming from the pipeline, I don't want that to be the first argument, which is the default, but I want to use it elsewhere on my uh, on the next function. So the first argument, because the uh, URL needs to be constructed in this order, we want the kind of the home page bit first, and then the uh, the path the fragment of the URL that will take us to the speech pages. So the dot basically takes what came out of the pipeline and places it in this case as the second argument of the str underscore c function. So Using Arvest, I'm able to parse the web page. And then once I parse it sufficiently, but I find out that what it gives me is not exactly what I want, I use the string R package to then manipulate the strings to get them into the format I want. And here I am, I have a list of all the URLs that I need. I'm only showing you the first hundred of them here, but we have 141 of them or so. Okay. Let's save these as COVID speech URL. So we're going to take a, uh, we're going to use this object we create called COVID speech URLs uh, going forward because it has information on all of the URLs we want data from. Okay, next up is iteration. So let's define our task. Our goal is to scrape info on all COVID-19 speeches of the first minister. So far, we have written a function called COVID speech and we have applied it to three URLs so far manually. And in fact, I've changed things up a little bit and I said, instead of giving you the URL, now that we've saved them, I'm going to say, apply it to the first one or the second one or the third one. And remember that I'm using these square brackets to say first element, second element, third element of the list. These would give me these one by six tibbles, but I still don't have everything in one place. And I definitely don't want to copy and paste this uh, 141 times either. So what else do we need to do? We want to run the scrape speech function on all COVID-19 speech links. We want to combine the resulting data frames from each run into one giant data frame. This is where basically iteration comes into play. So how can we tell R to apply the scrape speech function to each link in COVID speech URLs, this object that we constructed earlier, which has information on all of the URLs? There are, well, maybe many ways, but two obvious ways to do this. Option one is to write what we call a for loop. So in other words, we explicitly tell R to visit a link, apply the function, store the result, then visit the next link, apply the function, append the result to the stored result from the previous link, and so on and so forth. So it would be iterating by counting through a first link, second link, third link, so on and so forth, until it gets to the bottom of the list. This would be one way of solving it. Another option is to map the function to each element in the list of links and let R take care of the storing and appending of results. So in the first option, you are the one who has to take care of storing and appending the results. In the second option, we're going to leverage the fact that there are some uh, ready-made functions that we can use for mapping that can also take care of storing and appending the results. And for that reason, we're going to use option two. So we have to do less bookkeeping. We can uh, leave that to a function that has been tested and tried already. So it can do the bookkeeping for us. We're gonna go with option two. So how does mapping work? Suppose we have exam one and exam two scores of four students stored in a list. So my list is called exam scores. It has two elements, exam one and exam two, each of which have four elements in them. Uh, these are the scores of these four students. I would probably generally save this as a data frame, but for the purposes of, of this example, I've placed them in a list. So suppose we want to find the mean score in each exam. I would say map. The first argument would be what we want to uh, map over. So those are the exam scores, uh, that's the exam scores list. And then the second argument is the function. So I'm going to be saying that uh, I want to map the mean function over the elements of exam scores. Uh, so here is the mean for the first um, exam, 72.5, and the mean for the other exam, 68.25. What if I wanted the result to be a numeric or a double vector? Then I can use a variant of the map function, which is map double. So that gives me the same data, same information, but as double. And if I wanted those as character string, I don't know why I would ever want that, but say I did, I could use the map chr variant for that. 
So map something, there are a bunch of these variants. Ma the map function itself returns a list, but I can also do things like map logical, map integer, map double, map character, map DF or DFR, which basically returns a data frame by row binding, or map DFC, which returns a data frame by column binding. In our case, we want to go to each page and we want to scrape the speech from those. So we want to map the scrape speech function to each element of COVID speech URLs, the object we constructed earlier, and we want to return a data frame by row binding. So I'm going to say that I want to use the map DFR function over the COVID speech URL, so over each element of that, and the function I want to apply to each one of them is scrape speech. And I'm going to use save the result of all of this as a new object called COVID speeches. You probably want to save the result of something like this because it's going to take a little bit of time. Remember, basically with this one line of code, what I'm saying is go to each one of these 140 something URLs and apply that function scrape speech over them. The result it spits out will be a giant uh, tibble and we want to save that so that we can actually come back to that object again. And here it is. Uh, I've printed out only the first 15 rows here, but you can see that I indeed have 141 rows and six columns, which is exactly where we wanted to end up at the end of this. So we constructed our code over on single web pages, wrote a function for doing that, that could be applied over multiple pages. And then we figured out what we want to apply this over. So a list of the URLs, and ultimately, the iteration was entirely taken care of by the map DFR function that not only did the iteration for us, but then did the organization of what it, we uh, collected the data and stored it all in a data frame for us. It's pretty neat if you think about that. Um, one thing before we wrap up our discussion that I'd like to mention is what could go wrong. Well, um, this uh, function where we have map DFR, uh, will take a while to run and depending on how many uh, times we're hitting this web page, um, you might get an error of too many requests. I haven't received this error while I was going through this exercise, but if you were running this over and over again, you potentially could get an error like this, which is basically a way of the web server trying to kind of stop you from hitting you know, the servers too many times. If that's the case, you might want to slow down your hits by modifying your function to slow it down by adding a random weight, so sleep time between hitting each link. So this is just a way of kind of being nice, if you will, um, and saying that I'm not going to constantly make hits to the web page between each of the hits, so between scraping each of the pages, I'm gonna wait a little bit. And that waiting a little bit, instead of being a predictable amount of time, you might do something like, so there's a function in R called um, RUNIF, which basically draws a random number between zero and one. So that could be the number of seconds that you put your function to sleep before it um, does the next run. You may not want to do this yourself, right? Because it's going to slow down what you're doing. But if you are getting this sort of an error, that might be exactly what the web server needs you to do. So that's just something to keep in mind when we're doing web scraping. There are other ways and other in fact packages in R for doing this in a more principled way. There's a package called Polite that's specifically designed to do web scraping a little bit more politely. So you, if this is the sort of thing that you're interested in learning more about, I'd recommend looking into that package too.